Treating your room can give you much better performance from your Atmos system. But I know for many of you, that sounds like a boring topic and extra work. So how important is it really? Hey team, I'm Josh. In this video, we'll look at simple ways you can create a better environment for your soundbar or AV setup. Let's get to it. There's four main benefits to treating your listening area. Firstly, you'll improve the overall sound quality of your system. The dialogue will become more clear, the sound stage will become more evident, and lastly, you get the inherent benefit of creating some isolation, which lessens the amount of sound traveling through your walls into other rooms. An untreated room can give you lots of issues. Take for instance, the center speaker. When dialogue is played, you get a wave of sound moving towards your ears, and you pick that up as words, but that same wave also hits the hard surface of walls, which gets reflected, and then causes you to receive the reflective sound a couple milliseconds later. Now our brains are super clever and can distinguish between the first wave and the reflection and will cancel out the delay. That's fine if you're dealing with a single sound, but movies have lots of sounds coming from all different speakers and that's where our brain struggles to hone in on the right sound to listen to. This ends up turning into dialogue that's muddy and hard to recognize, which will often put down to the speakers not performing well or a bad mix from the studio, when quite often it's the acoustics of our room that's providing a bad performance. There's two ways we can treat the reflection. We can absorb it or diffuse it. Absorption is often done through the use of sound panels and will soak up the sound wave, whereas diffuse is a place not to take away the sound, but to disperse it, so you don't get the sound coming straight back to you. If you were to cover your room completely in sound panels, you'd create somewhat of an anechoic chamber and take away the natural echo and reverberation. We live in a world of hard reflective surfaces, so it's unnatural to be in a room that has no reflection, but we do want to lessen the certain areas that are particularly bad. If you've got the budget, hire an acoustic engineer to figure out where exactly in the room is giving you unwanted reflections. But for the rest of us, here's some things to try. Let's lay out three levels of sound treatment. The first level would be making sure there's furniture in the room that's strategically placed to absorb sounds. Plush carpet, thick curtains, rugs on hard floors, and bookshelves can all be used to dampen and diffuse the sound. Even if you have carpet, adding a thick rug can help to further absorb mids and highs, as carpet really only takes out the highest frequencies. Isolating your soundbar and ear level speakers from the cabinet can increase dialogue clarity and I'll leave links to some popular options. Oddly shaped rooms make it more difficult for sound to be reflected, whereas a perfectly rectangle room is an acoustic nightmare without treatment. There's software available that can test your room's acoustics, but for many of you, that'll be over the top, so placing these objects around the room can help a lot. The main area you want to start with is the first reflection point nearing the front of the room. Insulation, foam and wool can be great absorbers. Placing woolen blankets or a foam mattress can be a good test to see if it makes much of a difference in that space before diving into something more permanent. The second level would be to either purchase pre-made or creating your own sound panels. These are pretty simple to make and on the cheaper end only require a couple of pieces of wood, some absorbing material like the ones we just discussed, and a fabric cover. I've seen many people use a bed sheet for the inexpensive versions as well as more premium fabrics that are stretchy and acoustically transparent. If you want sound panels that also look good, there's plenty of companies that'll print a picture of your choice, which doesn't take away from it being a lounge and is far easier getting past your wife or flatmates. I thought about taking a standard canvas painting and stuffing it with foam, but the problem is that canvas isn't acoustically transparent and will act as a hard surface rather than letting sound go through. When it comes to foam, the thicker you buy, the lower the frequencies it'll absorb. Bass traps are also a great idea. These are super thick and wedge shaped, designed to be placed in the corners of your room. The benefit? Well, tighter, more defined bass. It will allow you to feel the bass without turning the subwoofer right up and annoying your neighbors. You can also get subwoofer isolation pads so the sound doesn't travel through the floor. I've made a video helping you guys figure out where to place your subwoofer and you can watch that here. If your soundbar or AV system uses virtual Atmos speakers or is designed to bounce sound off the walls, then make sure you don't place panels where sound would naturally reflect. Say you've got a 5.1.2 channel system and your Atmos channels come from the top of the speakers. Focus on the side walls and rear of the room and leave the ceiling above the Atmos drivers absorption free. For systems without virtual Atmos speakers, you can start by treating the side walls and ceiling. Contrary to what you'd think, you don't want a room that's symmetrical with the same objects on both sides. Offsetting furniture and panels so the sound isn't reflected at the same places can help widen the soundstage. It's a weird phenomena that makes your brain think there's another center speaker when it's all symmetrical. I kind of think it has something to do with how unnatural it is to have the same sounds coming into both ears simultaneously. The third level will be to deploy both sound and diffusion panels to the room. Diffusion panels aren't too hard to make, but can be time consuming and won't blend in as much as the sound panels. 
Aim for 35% of the wall space to be covered in panels and alternate between diffusion and absorption. Three to five inch sound panels are best for treating mid to high frequencies and eight inches are best for bass traps. There's also 2D and 3D diffusers available which offer different diffusion properties. If you've got the budget, then mix up the types of panels on the wall. You wanna place the 2Ds at the front of the room and 3Ds in the rear. When it comes to the percentage of diffusion to absorption, it's recommended that you cover 15% of the wall in absorption and 20% in diffusion. Now that's not a lot, but placed correctly can make a big difference and also trick your brain into thinking you're in a bigger room. The final goal should be when you're watching a movie, the room disappears and you're transported into the world of the filmmakers created. If you correctly place absorption and diffusion, you can create the experience for yourself. For those of you doing a new build or you've got the money and you want the absorption panels completely hidden, there are ways to place the panels behind a large piece of acoustically transparent fabric that stretches the length of the wall. At that point, you're getting professionals involved, but at least know it's an option. With that, I've put together a playlist of how to set up your system, where to place the sub and rear speakers, and how to get the most from your setup, which you can watch here. Anyway, that's all from me. See you guys soon.